John, thank you very much, and good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to uh, be able to be here and uh, to share this morning with all of you. I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, it's been a long time since you've had a speaker outside of the aviation industry to come and speak to you. So what does this speaker have in common with what you do? Well, as John had made mention, I grew up in Appleton, Wisconsin, which is just in the shadows of the granddaddy of them all, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, air show, and so I understood the impact that that air show had in that, uh, in that area, and haven't been there on many occasions, just to see all those planes fly and parked and come in and was a great experience. Secondly, the relationship I also figured out last night between being in this industry and being in the football industry. Two things, or several things we have in common. One, <clears throat> I think you both got to be a little crazy to be involved in what you do and what I do, and you have to like to drink. And so two things I think that uh, I found out last night when I got here is that I wandered in Vicus bar before I knew it was your bar. Uh, and I figured when you can get double martinis for the price of one, oh, I'm in the right place. And uh, so the bartender shared with me the experience of all of you who've been there and here and how wonderful he thought it was. The uh, 40 years of uh, air shows, the organization, it's a long time passing. And what had happened back those 40 years ago and where it is today, obviously, there's a lot of changes that have taken place. And part of the change is what we remember of that change. In the book River Horse, the author William Least Heat Moon wrote that our physical components change every seven years so that our brains continuously pass memories off onto a complete stranger who we have been is just now a fellow ghostly traveler. If memory were total and complete, perhaps we would be one person from start to finish, but forgetfulness cuts us off from who we have been so that hourly we are reborn. I tell you that in context, and maybe even from your own perspective, at least for mine, that I may not be the same person that I was 43 years ago when I was walking the rice paddies in Vietnam, or 32 years ago when I last wore a uniform in the National Football League. But the highlights of those times are forever etched in my memory. What I've come to learn is that it's usually my audience <laughs> that forgets who I am and how I single-handedly won those four Super Bowls <laughs> for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But if you look at that period of time within our lives for those who have been here since the get-go and up to where we are today, a lot of opportunities have opened because we really live in a culture of opportunities and not necessarily a culture of entitlement. And that's based on the simple premise that as long as we have choices within our lives, and basically we are a free people, but with choice comes a responsibility. And that responsibility is one, to be informed, to know more about what is happening within your industry, within your communities, within your shows. And then secondly, have the courage to act on that information. So if we have choices, then basically we only have two choices. 
want us to be less than we're capable of being, to do less, to have less impact, to be less involved, or secondly, is to do more, to be on top of your game, to be more involved, to be able to take your shows to a new height and to a new level. So if we have choices, then basically we only have one choice, and that is to be the best that we can be, no matter what we may do. But it raises for me the question of why, as we look around in our society, why? Why is it that some people succeed in their task when others seem to fail? Why in the world of sports do some teams continuously win when others seem to lose? What then are those ingredients that allow us individually and collectively to reach that potential?